Well, hello and welcome to Jonathan from the Heart. I'm Jonathan Asley of jonathanasley.com and I'm so excited to be shooting this short video for you today. Our topic is going to be around loss. Now, really quickly, if this content resonates with you and you have something you'd like to share that comes from the heart, please post a comment below and you're certainly welcome to ask me questions as well. So we're going to talk about loss today and uh, whether, and I'm, I'm going to talk about loss, for example, you lose a loved one, maybe you've lost a job, maybe you've lost a significant relationship. And as I began exploring loss at a deeper level, and I'm going to share with you in a moment why, I began to recognize that we have an opportunity with loss to shift to love. Let me repeat that. We have an opportunity when there is a loss to shift to love. And that's what I want to talk about. With great loss can come great love. So if you've been following my work for a while, um, many of you know that uh, I, I talk quite a bit about my son, my 19-year-old son, who passed away two years ago. His name is Connor. That's him right there. And his nickname is Salty. His nickname is Salty. Um, oh gosh, it just occurs to me that this is a Father's Day video. So I, I'm bringing this up also because it's Father's Day. And God, I have so much I want to say. I'm, I just realized I'm going to be all over the map. So please indulge me as you're listening or watching this um, because I'm literally, I'm actually very anxious right now. And the more I'm starting to talk, the harder this is becoming. Because not only did I lose my son two years ago, uh, six months before my son passed away, I lost my mom. And if you've noticed my pictures I post, um, there's a picture of my mom with my son, Connor. There's a picture of my mom with my dad when they first got married. And shortly after I lost my mom to cancer, I lost my son to an accident. Six months later, my father, who's pictured right there, decided to move back to his home country. He felt like if he's going to spend the remaining days of his life, and he was 93 at the time, I mean, he's going to be 95 in a few days, um, he wanted to go back to his home country. So I literally lost three-sevenths of my blood family in one year. So I understand loss deeply. And whether, again, I said whether it's a loss of um, uh, someone you love, whether it's the loss of a job, which I went through a significant job loss uh, 15 years ago where I lost a quarter million dollar job. I lost my seven figure net worth and I lost a marriage. Oh, I forgot we could even look at loss of marriage. Um, all of this loss. And then with my mother, my, my son, my, my, um, my father, um, and I've even lost a significant relationship. So as I'm reflecting upon all this, why am I, why am I still looking at my life very blessed? What makes my life so blessed when I've experienced so much loss? And I know this is true for many of you. You might have, like I said, lost a loved one. You might have lost a job. You might have lost a marriage. You might have lost a, a significant relationship. And in many cases, when we experience loss, we can get stuck. So I want to share with you uh, something. When I was at, when it was Connor's funeral and I was giving the eulogy and I'm looking at his family, his friends, our family, our friends, and I'm sitting there sharing some stories about Connor. And Connor was very unique. I mean, it's interesting. Um, that's my other son, Colin, right there. <laughs> by the way, you notice I change the pictures all the time. Uh, by the way, I get these from mixtiles.com. Uh, um, but there was such a contrast between both boys. Colin was the Stepford child. I mean, he graduated college magna cum laude, double major, you know, self-reliant. Whereas Connor was the one kid who beat to his own drummer. Um, you know those kind of kids. They're just, they just look at the world differently. Here's a picture of him uh, in his uh, uniqueness. And Connor, it's one of the things I miss most is that he had that special uniqueness about him. His nickname was Salty. There was just everything about him was just a little off kilter. I'm going to talk about this in a second because now I recognize one of the reasons why he passed away is that I'm at his uh, funeral giving the eulogy 
And I stopped in the middle as I'm looking at everyone. I said, everyone, look, I'm going to choose to grieve differently today. I don't want to choose to grieve with pain and suffering. I want to choose to grieve with love. And I want to lean into love. And as I began exploring love at a deeper level, I mean, here I lost my son, I lost my mom. Um, as I shared before, I lost money, I lost a significant relationship. Um, here, let me talk about that really quickly, a significant relationship. I was in a relationship with a fantastic woman. Here's a picture of her, Sherry and I. Drop dead gorgeous, sweetheart of a gal. But our, not but, and our relationship couldn't go the distance. In fact, as I recognized one of the reasons why I chose that relationship is I was still healing from an unresolved attachment issue. And if you're not familiar with the book Attached, if you're not familiar with the book Attached, definitely check it out because we both chose each other because we were healing from our attachment wounds. And when we healed it, this kind of leans into the love I'm talking about. We were able to shift our relationship from being boyfriend and girlfriend to now what we consider each other family. And I can't begin to tell you how grateful I am that she was there for me, both when my mother passed away and my son passed away. We became family with one another. And we were able to shift to love because we were able to uncouple in a very conscious way. In fact, I'm very honored. Uh, if you're not familiar with Catherine Woodward Thomas, she wrote a fantastic book called Conscious Uncoupling, Conscious Uncoupling, Five Steps to Living Happily Ever After. And uh, Sherry and I are in this book because we shared how we uncoupled, or a little, there's a brief share of how we uncoupled in a healthy way. So as I began sharing before, I was in the Collins, or Connors, excuse me, funeral and I'm leaning into love and I began to explore what does love really mean and as I said that I recognize or I'm recognizing now that a lot of that ability to shift to love during loss was because of the inner work that I had been doing prior to this doing a ton of personal development self-help and spiritual work and if you're not familiar with the book the untethered soul the untethered soul by Michael Singer Oh my God, this book is a game changer. This will change your life. This will allow you to shift from being stuck in great loss and begin to open your heart to great love. Let me repeat that. This book is going to help you shift from being stuck in loss to opening your heart to love. And I'm a big proponent of love. I mean, I, if you've been following me, I, uh, I occasionally talk about Marianne Williamson. Um, here's her CD, Return to Love. I need to get the book, but I have the CD in my car. I listen to it frequently. And she um, has is a spiritual teacher. She's been doing the teachings of the um, Course in Miracles. Here, here's a book of the Course in Miracles. In fact, um, it was about a month before Connor passed away. I began doing a deep dive into the Course in Miracles. Um, I had been doing, well, the deeper dive actually a year earlier, but we, we came up to the subject of death and loss. And as I was able to absorb, and by the way, the book Mike, Michael Singer's book talks about it as well, but as I was able to absorb, absorb death and loss in a different way, it allowed me to just go inward into what does it really mean to love for me? What does it really mean to love? And I was, so what I recognize is why I didn't go down the path of, of suffering and pain with Connor is because I've been doing so much work ahead of time. And that's my invitation for you to begin doing, and if you're already doing it, great, personal development, self-help and spiritual work. In fact, the reason why my book, you know, so what the heck is self-love anyway was birthed was because I recognized that how do we overcome loss? How do we overcome it? It's by injecting ourselves, injecting ourselves with a ton of love, just giving ourselves a ton of love on a regular basis. And that's my invitation for you. And how that looks for you is going to be unique to you. It's going to be unique to you, but that's my invitation. And, and the way I, okay, this is my perception. 
I, I look at most human beings as suffering on the inside in some way, shape, or form. We're suffering from not feeling good enough, not feeling loved, not feeling likable. And everyone talks about in the dating realm, you need confidence and, you know, men need to be chivalrous and women need to be like ladies and all that kind of stuff. And I'm here to say it's really hard to do if you're hurting on the inside. And add to that loss whether it's a child, whether it's um, your job. Like I, as I shared before, I lost a quarter million dollar a year job and I lost all my money in the market and then I lost my significant relationship and everything. And I could have went down the rabbit hole of despair and suffering. And many of you are feeling that and I get that. I've been there, I know this. And I only share what has helped me overcome significant loss because guess what we're going to experience loss in many ways shape or forms okay it's going to happen in fact it's just a part of life you know it's father's day and i'm thinking of connor i'm thinking of my dad i'm thinking of my son i'm thinking of my mom i'm thinking of everything and i hold on to a space that my loved ones are here with me right now. They're hugging me right now. In fact, um, when Connor passed away, I remember walking into my complex and there was a yellow butterfly that flew past me. I'm like, wow, I've never seen a yellow butterfly. How cool. And then the next morning when I walked out of my complex, and by the way, there's beautiful vegetation and a waterfall and pond and everything right where I live. I see this yellow butterfly. I'm like, holy cow. And then the next day, and I live at the top floor of a three-story complex, and I see a yellow butterfly out my balcony. And I like, holy shit, that's Connor. That's literally Connor saying hi. And then the next day, I'm walking out, and I see a yellow butterfly with a monarch butterfly just playing with each other. And I realize that's my mother and my son. My mother is taking good care of my son, and I'm so grateful for that. Thank you, Mom. Um, and by the way, I'm sharing this with you because yesterday I was coming out of the pool where I live and a yellow butterfly popped out in front of me. I'm like, yay, Connor's saying hi to me. We all get signals from our loved ones who have passed away. That's at least my interpretation of life. Maybe you've experienced something along that lines. If you have, please write it down. I'd like to hear how you've experienced a loved one who is in the afterlife that's saying hi to you. Please write that down. I want to read it. Um, anyways, I, I feel like I'm all over the map. Typically when I shoot my videos, I feel like I'm more concise and I'm, I'm more aligned. And today I'm just literally all over the map. It's Father's Day. I'm, I'm trying to hold it together <laughs> um, for you all. And it's hard because I miss him deeply. We would have gone to Benihana's. That was our ritual. Um, the boys, um, they oftentimes brought me a cake. Uh, oftentimes with a Father's Day tie or something, at least that's the ones I remember. They'd always give me a card. I'm not going to have those today. Well, thankfully, I'll be spending time with my oldest son, and I'm grateful for my oldest son as well. He's handled this really beautifully. Here's the thing, folks. Loss is inevitable. How we choose to experience it is up to us. And my invitation is lean into, lean into love. Don't listen to those folks that talk about leaning back. <laughs> you want to lean into love. You want to lean into love because it is through love for ourselves and others. I repeat that, for love for ourselves and others. Can we truly experience life in the juicy, delicious way? And my invitation for all of you is to find a balance of inner peace in your life and I highly recommend doing personal development, self-help, and spiritual work. And if you're interested in more of that, definitely check out my book, What the Heck is Self-Love? Anyway, again, and in the back, oh, by the way, that's the back cover, which my ex-girlfriend's boyfriend or partner, I should say, took it of me at their home. This is outside their uh, home. And I'm very good friends with uh, David along with Sherry. Um, oh, what I was talking about was at the back of the book, I list all of the different resources that I've used to do my best 
to experience life with a sense of inner peace. And yet, have I experienced loss? Absolutely. And with loss has come a great deal of love. And that's my invitation for all of you. Wow. Happy Father's Day to those fathers out there. Happy. Oh, let me just one last thing before I wrap up. I want to say one last thing about my ex-wife. A great mother. A great mother to my boys. In fact, she is the reason why they're great kids. Both Connor in heaven and Colin here. She is that reason. So on Father's Day, I'm also honoring the mother of my children. I'm, mother, I'm honoring my mother. I'm honoring my father. And my invitation is please honor those who are your loved ones out there. And today, if you can, for me, just go out and give someone, if you can, a big gigantic hug of love. It's always my invitation for everyone. All right, <laughs> I'm going to wrap up today. Please post a comment below if this resonates with you. If you have a story to share about a family member or a, lot, a loved one that you now see in the afterlife in a certain way, please post a comment below. Uh, if you feel like this resonates with you and you want to talk to a dating relationship coach, check out the links below because that's what I do for a living. And I'm going to wrap up this video now as I'm going to be doing in the future is to love myself. <sighs> love myself just give myself a big hug and my invitation is for you to do the exact same thing right now is love yourself and go find someone else to hug because we all need lots of hugs because that gives us an injection of love everyone stay salty wishing you a super duper wonderful day thanks so much bye-bye now